When you're running multiple accounts on Amazon, a lot of bugs can happen. In this video, I will cover five common bugs and what to do about them when running multiple accounts on Amazon. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. The first mistake, whenever you open up your second Amazon account, if you open it without having the following documents in order or in place, you're going to get that account suspended. So you need to have a unique bank account, you need to have a unique credit card and an email address that has never been associated to any Amazon account ever before. And that, that will prevent you from getting your account suspended. Also worth noting, you cannot sell the same items on multiple accounts. You must sell unique items on every account you sell under. Number two, if you have issues logging into your account, that is a very common bug as well. One of our clients, Steve over at Urban Worm, ran into this very problem when he was added to his second account and we had to run through clearing his cash to get it resolved. Hey everybody, my name is Steve. I own a small business called the Urban Worm Company. I'm one of, the, uh, one of Steven's clients there at my Amazon guy. Uh, I got in touch with uh, Steven this morning about an issue that I was having. Uh, what happened is that last week I ended up becoming an admin on, in somebody else's Seller Central account. So after I ended up getting all the requisite uh, user permissions, um, I ended up uh, not being able to access the settings in my own account. And so it kind of confused me. Anyway, I got in touch with Steven. He told me, uh, just log out of the account, clear your browser cache, log back in, see if you can access the settings. And sure enough, that worked. So uh, I appreciate the, uh, the speedy service. I'm kind of ashamed I didn't think of it myself. Uh, but again, I always appreciate uh, how quickly you guys get back to me. So thanks, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you later. See ya. So the solution there was to log out, clear your browser cache, and log back in. If that doesn't solve it, it's because your problem is quite larger and you may have to do further troubleshooting. Number three, losing access to your account. If you make a change to your deposit method, that is change the bank account receiving your funds from Amazon, and you do this, in, a, in an unusual way or a way that flags their system, they will lock everybody out. You'll lose all of your secondary users to the account and you may not even be able to log into your admin email. The most common reason this occurs is if you change your deposit method within 72 hours of a deposit about to be made. So if you got $100,000 being deposited in that 72 hour window, wait until that money clears before changing the deposit method. You may also find value in ticketing Amazon ahead of time and saying, hey, we're gonna change our bank deposit method. Do not be alarmed because we see security clearance issues on this happen all the time. This is probably the most common bug we see and it can really muck you up uh, and make it so you, you lose a couple of days of optimization effort, a couple of days of access lost into your advertising and other locations. So it's best to do this right after you make a bank deposit uh, and then that way it will not cause a security flag. Number four is the OTP, that is one-time password hack. And this bug happens when you can't uh, navigate between all of your accounts. This hack is bar, bar none, the most important thing you learn from this video. If you're not currently using a Chrome extension to log into uh, your OTP on Seller Central, you are dealing with the woes of logging in with your cell phone at the moment. Um, I have a full guide on this particular concept, but you're gonna go to your login settings and go to add a, a new app and use a Chrome extension to take a screenshot of this QR code. And this guide walks you through that step by step. Highly recommend you watch my video on this one. Uh, it will be a major game changer for your organization as, and even if you don't have multiple accounts, this I can't, I can't emphasize this enough. This is just such a game changer uh, in running Seller Central accounts. You must be doing this. You know, pause my video, go install the Chrome extension right now, go watch my other video, and then come back. And number five, brand registry issues. I have done so many videos, dozens and dozens of videos on anything related to brand registry. We have become experts on brand registry and trademarks because of just the sheer volume of need out there right now. Uh, in fact, if you need a trademark, whether it's for a new brand or it's your first brand, you can file a trademark with my Amazon guy in under seven days, complete your entire brand registry. 
We have filed more than 200 trademarks and we, we are experts on this question. And because of that, we've seen so many problems. We have a giant FAQ section that you can check out. All of this information is for free on this website link. And if you want to order a trademark from us, the cost to do so is $775. Now, the particular issues that we see on the brand registry are as follows. Number one, when you have multiple accounts, and you're trying to connect one brand registry to a new account, this can be very, very complex. The solution here is whenever you buy another account, gain control and access to the admin email address of Seller Central and the admin email address for wherever the brand registry was filed. Now, here's a tip and a word for the wise. If you're going to ever sell your company in the future, make sure that you have this super admin on Seller Central be the email address that files the brand registry. Do not put your brand registry into a personal email. Why is that? You can never transfer it, ever. The admin email file for brand registry is untransferable. The brand registry access can be, however. And so when you go through that process, you can file a ticket within brand registry to ask them to make an, uh, a registered agent for whatever email address you need. In addition to that, uh, there used to be an old rule where you couldn't have one email address attached to multiple brand registered accounts. That's no longer the case. So if you have a, let's say you're an agency watching this, if you wanna access all of your clients' uh, brand registries on one email, you can. Now, with that said, we've seen a lot of bugs when trying to add a brand registry email to other brand registered accounts where they claim like, hey, you're not in healthy status or whatnot. That's a common bug as well. But nonetheless, the best thing I can advise on brand registry issues is keep it clean, attach it to the super admin email, and whenever you buy an account, make sure you identify in advance where the brand registry email is. If they're not the same, let's say they threw it under a Gmail address, buy the Gmail address as well as part of the acquisition. It's that important. And, and make it a sticking issue when you're having your negotiations because it was them that made the mistake, not you. Uh, in addition to that, whenever you need to add a user to brand registry, the next two videos you need to watch is how to add a brand registry user to your account, and second, the full complete brand registry guide. I go in depth on all of the brand registry issues you can run into. My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy.